Hello everyone, welcome back to another video where today we're going to be discussing the latest rumours surrounding Stephen Moffat's return, a new 14th Doctor story, as well as an exclusive preview of the 15th Doctor, apparently featuring in the 2024 Doctor Who annual, as well as various new pieces of merchandise that have been released. But before we get into it, if you could do me a teeny tiny little favour and click that subscribe button, it'd be very much appreciated. We are trying to get to 20,000 subscribers as quickly as possible, so any support would be greatly appreciated on that front. Literally, if any of you subscribe, I'll love you forever. We're only, like, what, 60 subscribers away from 19,500? So, yeah, any support would help me out. I also have a Ko-fi. If you'd like to support the channel, the link to that will be in the description below. Basically, it's just a place where you can donate if you fancy helping out the channel. I've been trying my best to bring you daily Doctor Who content and, you know, updates as I see them, so any support would help me out, but of course, you don't have to. But with that said, let's get into the video. So this was the big news story that got fandom into a ruckus. Stephen Moffat, set for Doctor Who Return as Russell T. Davis as for new episode, Stephen Moffat, spelt wrong, which I'll admit isn't a good start. So this is from The Mirror, which, to be fair, is normally pretty good when it comes to Doctor Who news as in, like, rumours and leaks and that sort of thing. However, I have noticed it's not by Nicola Metford, it's by Mark Jeffries. Nicola Metford is usually the one with the inside knowledge on Doctor Who, so I'm going to take this with a bit of a grain of salt. However, I'm not going to completely dismiss it on the basis that it is still the Mirror, and the Mirror, whatever you think about them, generally Doctor Who wives have a pretty good track record. Stephen Moffat is set to make a sensational return to Doctor Who and write adventures for New Time on Chidi Gatwa. It's weird that it's spelt right here, but in the title it's not. The 61-year-old screenwriter acted as showrunner on the BBC One series between 2010 and 2017, having previously been a writer on the show during Russell T. Davis's original tenure. Russell has taken control of the TARDIS once again after being the man responsible for bringing Doctor Who back to screens in 2005, after it was cancelled in 1989, and he has asked his friend Moffat to create some episodes for 15th Doctor Shooty for the 2024 series. Before he was in charge of Doctor Who, Moffat was responsible for writing fan-favourite episodes like the Empty Child, The Girl in the Fireplace, and Blink, which introduced the Weeping Angels into the program's Carnival of Monsters. Nice little reference there. And Davis wants Moffat to be part of the Doctor Who revolution now that the BBC has teamed up with Disney Plus to take the show around the world on an unprecedented scale. A source said, Russell's on a mission to make Doctor Who great again. Bit Trump, but alright. Event television not to be missed, which is what it was for many years during his and Stephen's ten years in charge of the show. Now, I've seen some people getting annoyed at this phrase. Number one, it's from a random source. It's not from Russell himself. Number two, yeah, the Trump stuff is a little bit weird, as I outlined previously. But again, it's from this random source person, so I'm not really, you know, mad about this particularly. One of the best ways he can do that is to ensure he has the best possible writing for the programme. He has nothing but respect for Stephen and what he achieved with the show, and was a fan of his vision as showrunner. He approached him about returning in just a writing capacity because he knows Doctor Who inside out and has a brilliant imagination for adventures in space and time. He took some convincing but the chance to contribute to a show that he loved since childhood and see it blossom in a new era with a new Doctor was just too much to resist. Moffat was responsible for introducing the audience to the hugely popular Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor, who had the big shoes of 10th Doctor David Tennant to fill, and now Marvel star Karen Gillan as companion Amy Pond, and then Pierre Capaldi as the 12th Doctor and Jenna Coleman as his main companion Clara Oswald. Moffat also held the 50th anniversary special Day of the Doctor, which brought together Matt and David's Doctors and introduced the late John Hurt as the War Doctor for a multi-time Lord adventure. Also, I've just noticed that it says William Hurt, not John Hurt. That's very odd. Moffat, who also created Sherlock and Dracula with Mark Gatt, has recently admitted he hopes Doctor Who will go on forever, like other English heroes such as Robin Hood and Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, and then basically they just go on to say, all the stuff that we've already heard from Moffat before, and then they say that the BBC declined to comment when asked about Moffat returning. So this is very interesting. I don't know whether I'm in the minority, but I would totally be up for a Moffat return. Obviously, I understand people want new talent, and I think that's totally fair. I do think people are jumping the gun on that slightly, because we've had no such indication that there won't be new writers in the new era, so I don't think necessarily one returning writer is necessarily a bad thing. But also beyond that, this is nothing confirmed, this is nothing official, and I think some people are already, you know, getting up in arms about it who perhaps didn't like the Moffat era, you know, as much, 
and are like, no, no, don't bring him back, don't bring him back. But the reality is, we don't even know whether this is happening yet. I feel like people are very ready at the moment to just see anything Doctor Who and be like, ah, no, it's bad online in some places. And yeah, you know, just give it a chance, I feel like. Also, just speaking from my own personal opinion, Moffat and Davis together often leads to some of the best episodes, in my opinion. Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead, Blink, Girl in the Fireplace, all really, really strong episodes. Empty Child, Doctor Dances. I mean, they're all really, really solid. So, yeah, personally, I think Russell and Moffat are a bit of a dream team. So I'm more than willing to see what they would come up with together for a new episode. The next big thing was the Doctor Who 2024 annual got leaked, or the details surrounding it got leaked. This is just a preview cover, but it says the next annual by Paul Lang has been announced for September 7th, featuring behind-the-scenes photos, dialogue, costumes, and hints from the new episodes, an exclusive 14th Doctor story, and a sneak peek at the 15th Doctor. So yeah, we're going to be getting another expanded media story for the 14th Doctor before his big debut in 2023 in November with the 60th anniversary. It's really cool to see that we're going to be getting so much stuff with the 14th Doctor, even though he is, you know, an interim Doctor for all intents and purposes. And it's nice that the 2024 annual will have a sneak peek at the 15th Doctor. It's nice to see that the annual will actually have some new content rather than just kind of, I don't know, putting out stuff that we already kind of know. You know, like, it's nice to see some exclusive stuff being put into the annual again. On the topic of books, though, we had this book announcement that there's going to be a series of children's books dating from the 1960s to the 2000s to correlate with the decades of which Doctor Who was airing, talking about basically where Doctor Who was at the time and where the world was at the time. I won't read all the synopsises, but very, very cool stuff. And in a similar vein, we had the announcement of a 10th Doctor Christmas collection hardcover, includes an exclusive story featuring the 14th Doctor, so that's two new 14th Doctor stories, which is cool. I have to live on, alone, that's the curse of the Time Lords. The Doctor's 10th incarnation was hilarious, furious, fun, and vengeful. He also had great hair. He also saved the world and the universe more times than anyone can remember. But from the Christmas invasion to the Runaway Bride, things have already seemed to need saving around the festive season. So follows a series of 10 incredible tales across the universe as the Doctor and Rose and Martha and Donna battle aliens and cross the boundaries of space and time to save Christmas Day. From a future Earth department saw overrun by killer toys, to a gold rush distant on a white dwarf star, get ready for 10 incredible stories from the 10th Doctor. And a much later regeneration even has a tale to tell. So yeah, I've seen some people getting up in arms about this because, oh, it's more David Tennant stuff. Personally, he is the current Doctor at the moment, so honestly I'm surprised it's taken them this long to capitalise on him in this way, you know, like, it just, it makes sense, in my opinion, for them to do stuff like this. And the fact that we're getting two exclusive 14th Doctor stories, I think is really cool. And yeah, I'll pick up both the annual and this book to see the new 14th Doctor content alone. And then the final thing I want to talk about, probably the weirdest bit of merch I've seen in a while, Stife have announced a new bear to coincide with Doctor Who's 60th anniversary. As you can tell, it's based on William Hartnell's first Doctor, there's specifically 1,963 of them being made, which is obviously a reference to the premiere date of Doctor Who. It's specifically been done in black and white as a tribute to, obviously, the show back then being in black and white, and it's got the Doctor Who 60 years non-diamond logo emblazoned on the foot. I will say, I'm not going to buy this. Look at the price. As for why it's so expensive, as far as I can tell, Stifer basically like the... I don't know, like the, the Rolls Royce of teddy bears. Apparently they're like really, you know, fancy expensive teddy bears. I won't personally buy one, but hey, it's a different piece of merchandise. I'll give it that. It's just not one that I expected to see, but nonetheless, I'm happy to see it. But yeah, that about wraps up this video. If you did enjoy, be sure to give it a like, comment down below your thoughts, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you later.